Call this meeting to order on November 15th, 2017 at 5.30 p.m. and ask you all to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And could you all please remain standing for the invocation by the district fire chief, Small Colm? Dear God, we thank you for the many blessings that you give to us. We thank you for this season of Thanksgiving. We thank you for the veterans that have given their lives that we may be free. We thank you for all the faces that are gathered here today and the new lives that represent our future. You give them wisdom. You give them guidance. May you bless this evening and may it be productive. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> thank you so much. Mayor, I would like to call up Kim Gibbons, our, who's acting as our village clerk this evening to do the swearing in of the council. Do hereby, hereby solemnly swear or affirm that I will support, protect, and defend that I will support, protect, and defend the Constitution and Government of the United States and the State of Florida. The Constitution and Government of the United States and the State of Florida. That I am duly qualified to hold office under the Constitution of the State. That, that I am duly qualified to hold office under the Constitution of the State. state and that I will well and faithfully perform the duties of and that, that I will well and faithfully perform the duties of and then state what your position is Council Vice Mayor of the Village of Wellington of the, of the Village, Village of, of Wellington, Wellington. Yeah. Congratulations um, Now we are going to approve the agenda if we could. Do I hear a motion? I will make, I would like to make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Seeing that there is none, the agenda is approved. Mayor, uh, this evening we had a call from um, Palm Beach Sheriff's Office and unfortunately they will not be able to make their presentation this evening. So we're gonna move forward and we're gonna go with to the Palm Beach County Fire Rescue presentation. District Chief. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the commission. We would like to present you with the top calls that Palm Beach County Fire Rescue has been dispatched to in the last fiscal year. So ladies and gentlemen of our audience, this means also that we're gonna need uh, some participation from you. Are you guys ready? Okay. So, who can tell me what they think is the number one call that we run uh, at Palm Beach County Fire Rescue every year? Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, are you running for office? Okay, good, because I'm not going to vote for you. <laughs> so, cats and trees. Uh, do we run cats and trees? No. Well, actually, unfortunately, we do. However, we're trying to educate the public that, you know what? If your cat is stuck in the tree, guess what? When it gets hungry, it's probably going to do what? Climb back down. Calm down. Or eat a so you probably don't need to call what number? 911. You probably should get out some cat food, right? Okay. So what seriously is the number one call that Palm Beach County Fire Rescue runs every year? Yes, ma'am. You know what? Uh, we're very thankful that it is not the number one call. Though our numbers for drug overdoses has increased dramatically in the last three years. And actually, we are a rescue fire department. So we run about 85% of our calls are actually going to be rescue calls. Yes, ma'am. 
Actually, car accidents are one of the top 10, but they are not the number one call that we run every year. Yes, sir. Ah, good job. I've fallen and I can't <laughs> get up. <laughs> there are two types, one with injuries and one without. Uh, the top number one is with injury and when you get down to uh, number eight, it is falls without injuries. So, you know what, if that's our number one call, uh, can I get your assistance, ma'am? Uh, actually, I'm going to get both of you. Okay. I'm going to make sure you pass one of these out to everybody. Okay. So, if you were uh, doing public education, uh, what would you want to educate the public on as far as slips and falls? Don't do it. Yes, you're all very quiet. Anybody have grandparents around? Okay. How old? I. Okay, old. Everybody thinks everything over 50 is old. Uh, actually, we try to educate the public on most falls are preventable. So there are things that you can do to prevent slips and falls around your house. As kids, we taught you, make sure you clean up your spills. We taught you as kindergarten kids, don't jump on your beds, beds right? On, for seniors, we try to tell them to go and take a look around their house and see what they can do to actually prevent those falls from happening. So it may not be you, but it may be your grandparent or at some point your parents. Uh, so take those home and share them with your family and say, hey, these are things that we can do to make sure our grandparents or our neighbors who may be older can do to prevent slips and falls. Okay, so what is the second call that Palm Beach County Fire gets dispatched to. This one here fills in a lot of different spaces because we haven't taken them all the way out to all the little things. But it's sick person. So sick person covers a lot of things. A lot of times people will get up and they'll say, I'm not feeling right. That could mean they may have had a stroke. Sometimes it means, uh, they may be a little paranoid, or sometimes it may mean that they may have had a drug issue because sometimes people just lump a lot of things onto, into sick person. So number three call is what you would think the fire department would, would run on. It's not fires, but fire Alarms, good job, fire alarms. So, we wanna make sure that we prevent those fire alarms from happening. And sir, I'm gonna ask you, if you do me a favor, open that up and pass those out to everybody. Cause that's fire prevention around the house. So what is the number one cause of fires in the home, United States and Canada? It's not candles, but we've had a huge increase in candle fires. Who do you think's been responsible? Bath and Body. Bath and body. No. <laughs> but who shops at Bath and Body Works? Women? People. Okay, women. And who? <laughs> um, people. People. Predominantly uh, younger women or older women? Both. Younger. A lot of younger women. Like a lot of women your age? So how many of you have candles in your room? <coughs> wow, look at that. Guess who the largest increase in candle fires was from? Me. Yep, high school and early aged uh, females. So when you're using candles, you need to do what before you leave the area? 
Blow them out. You need to make sure they're on what? Oh, did you have a candle fire in your room? Yes. You did? Oh. Anything you'd like to share? <laughs> oh. How much damage? Any? Loss of a pillow. Okay, we'll take a loss of a pillow rather than loss of a bed, loss of a of a room or a house. So, ladies, again, be sure that you blow them out before you leave the area and before you go to to sleep. Okay. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> What's that? You had a candle fire. And what happened in your situation? I just put it in the garbage, and then the garbage caught on fire, and I left the room and closed the door because my mom doesn't want me having candles in my room. And then she smelled smoke, and I was like, no, no, I just, I just lit a candle, and then we went in there. It was like fire going up the wall. How old were you? It's like last year. <laughs> oh. Don't throw lighted matches in your trash can. Make sure they're extinguished properly. Okay. And obviously, the number one cause of fires... Uh, I got two gentlemen who think they know what the number one cause of fires is. Yes, sir. Unattended cooking is the number one cause of fires in the home. So... Make sure you do what before you leave the area? Turn out oh, order takeout. There you go. Takeout? Turn it off. <coughs> Don't be distracted. So the number one cause of fires in the home, unattended cooking. Increase in candle fires. We talked about that. And then our next one is respiratory and trouble breathing. So a lot of times we get questions about, well, should... Why do I get an engine and a rescue, or uh, why do I have so many people coming into my house? Anybody know? Because <coughs> generally, if it's a respiratory or a cardiac issue, we need lots of hands. Somebody to get the medication history, somebody to do all those kind of things, and somebody to do medications. And this is another program that we have from the fire department. It's called the Vial of Life. So somebody can take and put all of their medication lists on here, their medical history, their doctor, and then put it on their uh, refrigerator. And if we come in, we'll take a look and see if it's there. And you can take one of these and pass them around. OK. Anybody have any idea what the number five call that we've been called on in Wellington in the last year? Somebody said it earlier. They thought it was one of our top motor, motor vehicle crashes. Yep. So one of the things that you may not know or you may have seen is anybody ever see a yellow dot on the back of somebody's window? If somebody has a medical uh, problem or they're taking medication, they can take and fill. And I'm going to ask you if you do me a favor. Pass those out. Just kind of like that white paper that's going around. This one's for your vehicle. So you actually fill this out. So if you had a, a child who was autistic, or you had a child who had, couldn't talk, and you were involved in a car crash, we'd have this filled out, put it in your glove compartment, put a picture of the child on it, and it lets us know what's going on. So it could be for child, could be for adult, could be for a senior but it gives us all the information. And then on the back window, you would put a yellow dot and it lets us know that we need to go to the glove compartment and find that information. Okay. 
Number six was chest pain. And the last three, because we already mentioned falls without injuries. Thank you, ma'am. But the last three tend to sometimes go together. Unconscious, unresponsive. Syncope or fainting. Somebody's passed out. Seizures and convulsions. Okay. So why did we see an increase in all those three together? What are we having a huge crisis with throughout the country? What's that, ma'am? Suicides. We are having a crisis with suicide. Oh yeah. Hopefully you all know to look out for one another. Hopefully you're all... Uh, interconnected, good friends. But there's another thing that's going on. Uh, what's the, uh, yes ma'am? The opioid epidemic and drugs. Uh, who's that affecting? Yes sir? You know what, used to be prescription painkiller people and all that. But we're starting to find that it's affecting a It used to be uh, a lot of older people. And recently, who is it that's coming out that we're finding dead from heroin or opioid? Yes, ma'am? Actually, we're finding uh, middle-aged people, but we're also starting to see a huge increase with uh, young adults. What group would you guys be considered? Young adults. Uh, let me tell you the story of Jessica. Jessica happened to be about 20. And Jessica broke in to her cousin's house and stole some money. Well, the cousin couldn't figure out quite what had happened and then finally figured out who had stole the money. And when they went to arrest Jessica, because it was part of the family, her grandparents begged, please, 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 don't press any charges. We don't want her to have a criminal history. We want to make sure she's going to be okay. We want to make sure she grows up and has all those opportunities. She was only 20. So, her cousin didn't press any charges. Two years go by. And all of a sudden, Jessica disappears. Nobody can find Jessica. So her grandparents, her, her mom and dad were divorced. Her mom and her dad and her other uh, family members, everybody was out looking for Jessica. Nobody could find Jessica. Finally, they said, we need to do what? We need to call the police. So they call the police. Two days go by. And finally, they get a call from the local police. They had found Jessica. She was at the end of a dead-end dirt road with the needle still stuck in her arm. <clears throat> Jessica wasn't coming back. And perhaps if her cousins and her family had pressed charges back then, she may have gotten help, but nobody knows. But at the, li at the age of 22, she was gone. And the reason that I know that is because Jessica was my cousin. So when you guys are out, and you guys are looking at your futures, make sure you make good choices with all the things you do, because it will impact your life. And I wish that you all have long, healthy lives and make great impact upon our future. 
because you guys are the future. Not only Wellington, but the state of Florida and the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll turn it back over to you, if you unless you have any questions. No, but thank you, thank you so much, Mr. Holmes and the Palm Beach County Fire Rescue for everything you do. Mayor, if I may ask, um, I'm going to um, ask if the council would not mind. It's not on our agenda, but I would like to call up the assistant village manager, the, sorry, the assistant village clerk to explain the public comment process. <coughs> All right, so here's the deal. We <laughs> already sold out these cards. There's a lot more of them right here. When the council calls up individual items for discussion of each of the departments, if you're going to comment on that item, fill out your card, put that item number on there, and get it to me before that item comes up. And what will happen is after they present to the council, before they start their own discussions, they're going to ask for your comments. If you're coming in to just speak on regular items of general interest, that'll happen at the end of the agenda when they call for general public forum. Same thing, no number required, just put the topic. The mayor will be calling your names out as, uh, at the end of the meeting. Just make sure the key is get your name on the card, get the card from me before the item is discussed. That's all. <laughs> Mayor, we'll now start our uh, presentations by our departments on their consent agenda items. And the first one up is the authorization to award a contract to provide investment management services. Could you please come up? Just a moment, we're going to get some assistance for you. I'm not sure I'm able to do this, but okay. we'll give it a shot. Oh, there's Ken. Oh, perfect. <laughs> awesome. If anyone else has PowerPoints that you'd like to use, if we can, if we can get them up here. We can give them to John, and Jonathan can, can get them ready. If you would state your name and your department you're representing. My name is Eduardo Dira. I'm representing the finance department. And I'm Alana. All right, to, so um, to set a few parameters for the goals of the asset management for the w village of Wellington, um, we have a portfolio of 110 million dollars and the goal with that is not to make money but to preserve the existing portfolio so to select an investment management firm um, this this is what they do um, qualifications and experience of the firm are worth 40 points and technical approach another 40 points and fees 20 points they all add up to a hundred um, so if you want to yeah, so basically, um, even though some firms may like cost more, we have to consider how qualified and experienced they are when we're making our decisions on to like what firm we want to pick for our investments. So those are some of the factors we have to consider on the PowerPoint. So um, the description of the organization is important because uh, as you may think, uh, we can't just give $100 million to someone who doesn't know how to manage <coughs> it. And um, soft dollar agreements and joint ventures with other companies are also factors that are taken into consideration. And also how much money that firm manages is uh, also kind of a big deal because the previous asset manager for the Village of Wellington, which was PFM Asset Management, uh, 
their portfolio was a bit too large for the village of Wellington. So when when that happens, uh, that's kind of an issue because the uh, the amount of money they manage is like also determines the amount of focus that they could put into the village's money. So it's not like we like randomly choose one. There's a very um, particular like approach where they assign point values to all the firms they're <coughs> considering, and then the one with like the most points is chosen to be the firm to represent Wellington. So the other 40 points are technical <coughs> approach and methodology. So the firm's investment philosophy is one of them. The investment programs, um, what kinds of investments are to be made with allocated funds. Uh, that could be something called a local government investment pool, which is like pretty much a fund dedicated to local governments. Uh, that also ties into the investment methodology and um, how investment ideas are originated. The village has to have a say in um, which securities are purchased. So, yeah. And the uh, contract is awarded over a three-year term. So we want to see how much they would charge over a three-year term. I'm sorry. <laughs> so how this is calculated is with basis points and what basis points are is one one hundredth of one percent so this was the third place of middle which was the previous asset manager so what they did was they basically for the first $25 million of the first year, they would charge 65 basis points. That would amount to a total of $16,250. For the next 25 million, it would be six, base, six basis points. That would amount to $15,000. And for the last 50 million, it would add up to 27,500. And for the total 100 million for the year one, it would be $58,750. So for the second year, the rates go up a little bit. It's um, 0.0083 in basic points, and then 0 0.007, then 0 0.0063. So the fees would total to $69,000. <laughs> And for the final year, um, the total would be $80,000 with these basis points, as you can see here. And so the grand total would be a fee of $208,500. Uh, this is the second place of middle, Sawgrass Asset Management LLC. And what we saw with these guys was they didn't have any experience or sufficient experience. And uh, most of the decisions would go through their CEO, David Furfine. And so over three years, they would charge $50,000 each year, amounting to $150,000. So the winner for th this was Public Trust Advisors. They had a smaller portfolio, which means that more focus was put on Wellington's money. They had qualified professionals with 20 years plus of experience and their fee was reasonable. So as you can see, for the first 50 million, they would charge $35,000. And for the next, they would charge $30,000, $65,000 per year to a grand total of $195,000. That's it. Are there any questions from the council? Um, so does this contract abide by and abstain to any and all legal requirements by federal, state, county, and Wellington ordinances and laws? Do you have a card? Yeah. 
<laughs> Thank you. That's good. Uh, before we begin, we, we need to see if there's any public comments on this item. Are there any public comments on the item? Something tells me that there is. Oh, that's Jake. What is a Yes. Name and address, please. My name is Jake Rogowski, uh, 724 Foresteria Avenue. Um, we were just saying that the residence group uh, supports the contract given to public trust advisors because of their rankings, as they explained. And um, though they did ask for more money from last year, we felt that it was worth it to continue business with them. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Are there any other more are there any other public comments? Seeing that there are none, we'll now move into council's comments. Does any other council member have a comment or question? Okay, I have one question. Um from the text, I can see that public trust manages West Palm. Have you checked in with them to see if there's been any benefits that they've received or any issues that they've had in the past with public trust? Uh, no, we cannot say that, but they, on their um, sheet that they, on their submittal, um, they did put a reference for West Palm Beach. So uh, we believe that if they can refer us to West Palm Beach, then they have provided a good service for them. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're gonna do, does anyone have a motion to approve? I'd like um, to make a motion to uh, vote on the uh, contract. Second. Second. Okay, we're gonna. Second. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna vote now. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Seeing that there is none, the motion to approve is approved. Yay. Yay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. <laughs> Our okay. next um, agenda item is authorization to renew existing contract with Zimbelli Fireworks Manufacturing Company for the annual July 4th fireworks display. Would that group step forward? Please state your names. Um, I'm Rebecca Cocott. Sarah Casey. We're from the Parks and Rec Department. Uh, <coughs> approval to proceed. Approval. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Grants it. Okay. So basically, we're asking for a renewal in our fireworks contract, and this is obviously specific to our 4th of July festivities we have throughout the village of Wellington. Thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> um, so we're asking for an authorization to renew an existing contract with Zimbelli Fireworks. Um, it'll It's going to be for our... Um, fourth year coming with them. Uh, the amount is $35,000, but uh, last time, this is the last time we can renew this contract. So being that is worse in the past, we want to continue with this. Okay, so a little bit of background information regarding the fireworks is that on April 23rd, 2013, we did implement this company into our community and we allowed them to do our fireworks. And since then, um, we awarded them the contract from 2013 to 2015 and it's been um, incredibly successful. So what we're proposing right now is a two one-year renewal. So this is our last year to renew, which is something super important. And um, it's $35,000. It's about $1,000 more since the last time we renewed so we see no financial burden with and renewing. Um, and this actually is already budgeted for in the Parks and Rec Department budget um, throughout the Village of Wellington. So we see like no issue with the monetary funds. Um, <clears throat> so basically the reason why we want to continue this contract also is for the benefits of the community. Um, this display that we have every year has been successful in the past and it brings the community together and overall is a great experience so we might as well go with this last year as we have it yeah there's an overall consensus with our within our community regarding these fireworks and like overall very positive like no negative feedback so far so it's super important to renew this contract and this is the specifics of what the contract entails. So um, it's a two one-year renewal. So we'll have it for 2018 and 2019. And it's a 25-minute classic 
um, firework display. So colors and effects, obviously. And I'm sure all of us living in Wellington have been able to experience this. Do you have any questions? I would like to open the floor for public comment, seeing we have one from Mark K. You can come on up. Please make sure you state your name and your address. Name is Mark K, 205 Amesbury Circle, Wellington, Florida. So I would like to ask the Zambelli for the contract, why it would be better to use the one we've been using right now instead of going for another local vendor and might be bidding out for a different contract with a different company? Well, you see, this is our last year that we have the opportunity to continue with Zambelli. And since the records have shown that it has been popular in the past and successful with our residents and the community as a whole, we figured that since it's already implemented into the budget that we have established, we might as well just finish out the last year strong. No other questions. <clears throat> we have a comment card from Leanne Lopez. Lynn Lopez. Shook her head, yeah. Wait. Um, my question was the same uh, as Please his. state your name and address oh. for the record. <laughs> Leanne Lopez. I live in 1938 South Club Drive. Um, my question was basically the same as his, um, but maybe suggest something. Um, have some belly, but also support other local companies that might, you know, St be stepping up after the Sunbelly company, you know, almost to train them so that the transition between the um, the popular Sunbelly fireworks um, yeah. may be a little smoother of into course. a new contract with another company. Yes. So maybe just do a dual uh, firework company this yeah. year. So we went through this, but then like debates within our department, and we decided that nowhere locally do we have the actual like uh, materials to employ a firework company for a display this large that's supposed to actually have access to all the community. Locally, we don't really have like firework companies um, in Wellington. And then the ones that we do have, they're small, sc smaller scale, and they don't address the community needs as like a whole. Another question. Thank you. Thank you. We have another question from Ivana Bonilla. Hi, I'm Ivana Bonilla and I live in 14114 Wellington Trace. Um, it's not really a question, it's just a comment from, it's like a pro I see that it's an event that coming from a family that has a lot of little kids, it brings like a lot of enjoyment to it and they like look forward to it so i think it's something that definitely needs to be renewed it's something that needs to be like taken advantage of as our last year and really like just have fun with it so i approve that's it thank you, thank you. are there any other public comments questions seeing that there is none we will move on to council questions and comments does anyone on the council have a question or comment um, so, while working with Sam Belly, have we ever experienced any venues where conflict occurred? And also, I want—I was wondering what caused the, what accounts for the influx in the price of the Sam Belly contract this year? Well, regarding your question of how we have proven that there has been no complications, is through different surveys and asking people of the community. And we can attribute the price increase to honestly just like classic inflation. And then the fact of the matter, like at fireworks, like for a display this big, aren't that like inexpensive. So we're obviously going to see price increases throughout the years. And this is um, a two one year contract. So this is for the next two years. Also, we have to keep in mind that it's already implemented into our budget. So extra spending isn't really being factored. Thank you. Are there any other comments, questions? I would just like to say I've been a Pearson for the past two years for the 4th of July event, and the fireworks show is always amazing and great, so I definitely think this is a great expenditure that the village should be 
doing because it just brings the community together and it is like Ivana said it's really good for like the little kids and families to come on out so <coughs> now we will do I have a motion to approve <coughs> Oh, I was gonna say something. Sorry, Kyle. It's cool. It's fine. Just a councilman. That's cool. Um, anyway, <laughs> so um, at first I did not. I don't know. I'm not gonna start with that. Never mind. That's dumb. So um, I enjoy the fact that <laughs> that we can come together as a community and enjoy the fireworks, especially considering we've been with them for so long, this specific company. And I just want to say that I completely endorse finishing off our years with them strong. That was pretty much it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Now do I have a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve the bill. I second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody <laughs> in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Seeing that there is none, the authorization to renew an existing contract with Zimbelli is approved. Thank you. Our next agenda item and group will uh, present on the authorization to renew existing contracts to provide landscape maintenance services for primary roadways, equestrian trails, canal banks, slopes, and um, for the village-owned facilities. <coughs> <coughs> I'm Emily Mosier and I'm a part of the Public Works. I'm Brianna Vasquez. Marley Cannon. And we are here for the authorization to renew existing contracts to provide landscape maintenance services to primary roadways, equestrian trails, canal banks, slopes and fingers, throughout the village with GNC Car Care Incorporation associated with the Wellington Proposal Lawn Care at a cost of $472,107.30 annually and village owned facilities with Black Forest Enterprise Incorporated associated with Gardenscapes of the Palm Beaches at an annual cost of $180,900.77. Now proposing the first contract is Brianna. In regards to the first contract with the GNC Car Care Incorporation that's associated with Wellington Professional Lawn Care, they provide local maintenance to the services to primary roadways, equestrian trails, canal banks, slopes and figures throughout the village at a cost of $472,107.30 annually. The existing contract was awarded for a period of three years expiring <coughs> on September 30th of 2016 with two additional one-year renewal options. The staff is seeking authorization to exercise the second and final renewal option, which is effective October 1st, 2017, through September 30th of 2018, with no change in pricing. This would benefit the community because it is local, and they also do great work. And it would be beneficial also to keep it because if we did have to change the contract, it would increase the price to rebid with a new company. Um, I'm here to present the renewal for the second company um, with Black Forest Enterprises, DBA Gardenscapes, the Palm Beaches. They have asked to renew their contract at the, um, at the price of $180,900, except with a 3% price increase. They explained to us in a letter that they need that the price increase is only called for because of the cost of internal um, personnel and, and equipment. Um, we also investigated this as to see whether and they have assured us that they are trying to lower the crosses the prices internally as as much as possible before having to raise a price have, having to raise their prices with us um, we have been working with this company for the past three years and they have not asked for a price increase until now and this is our last chance to renew with them so personally, we think that it would be in our best interest to renew this contract even with the price increase. The 3% increase would only add an extra $6,000 to the 180000 that we are already paying for them. They have provided excellent services in their time with us and they are also a local company. And overall, we feel that the price increase is warranted and acceptable for the care that they have given to our facilities. 
any questions? <laughs> I'd like to open the floor up for public comment. We have a question or comment from Amy Kaufman. You can come on up. <coughs> Hello, my name is Amy Kaufman. My address is 12736 Westport Circle. And I would just like to say as a resident of Wellington that I agree with this renewal, seeing as though particularly with canals, the flooding has greatly improved that you could say since 2012 with Tropical Storm Isaac. Um, <laughs> and now with recently Hurricane Irma, it was greatly decreased the flooding, preventing a lot of damage and the cleanup was a lot quicker and um, convenient and yeah I think it's a great idea thank I agree you. thank you we have another comment from Julia Jackson hi my name is Julia Jackson address is 10379 Wellington Park Drive and I just want to say I do support the notion only because it does support local businesses and helps to benefit the community as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other public comments or questions? Seeing that there is none, I'll open it up to council's comments. So have we been satisfied with their services in the past and um, have there been any issues? If not, we we have been incredibly satisfied with their services in the past few years. We haven't had any issues with them. Thank you. I was, uh, what is the cost to possibly rebid this contract out to other companies in the local area? It would be probably in the tens of thousands for the staff time that would take. And also, we don't have a firm chance of getting a rebid that is actually lower than what we're paying now. Question. Um, I completely like. I think that it's a good idea to renew the contract, but maybe after this contract expires, they, they say, oh, we got the price increase last time and they were fine with that, but who's to say it won't stop there? What if next time it's a 6% increase? What if it turns into a 12% increase, which I'm saying is keep an open mind for later providing this contract to other companies? Um, I just, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Um, as of now, since in the through they have, this is our last renewal with them. So after this, we will be forced to rebid anyways, regardless. And even so, if this wasn't our last chance, they haven't asked for a price increase in the three years we've worked with them. Even if they, even if it probably was warranted due to inflation. So personally, they're probably I think they're a trustworthy company enough. Any other comments or questions? Um, so as a resident of Wellington for 17 years, I have always seen the medians being fully taken care of, and um, I hear that you respect this company with the utmost regard. However, it was not stated that this was in our budget, so do, is there leeway in our budget for the permit of this company, of the influx of 3%? There is. It's already accounted for in the budget, per se. Thank you. Would the price increase account for any changes in the services that they're giving us now, or would the services stay exactly the same? Um, the services would stay the same, but again, the services have already been exemplary. Awesome. Thank you so much. Do I have a motion for, oh wait, thank you guys for your time. Do I have a motion for approval? I make a motion to vote on the legislation. Second. Okay, we'll vote now. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Seeing that there is none, the authorization to renew the existing contracts to provide landscape maintenance is approved. Thank you, guys. Our next um, agenda item is authorization to award annual contracts for civil engineer and traffic engineer, wastewater process and reclaim water engineer, electrical, instrumental and control engineering and hydrogeological <laughs> engineering and related consultant services. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. To get us started, my colleague Hirsch will be handing out a price breakdown for the annual contracts. Thank you. Thank you. 
My name is William Bussey, and I am here to seek the authorization to award annual contracts to the, for the following, to multiple firms for the following, civil engineering, traffic engineering, wastewater process and reclaimed water engineering, electrical, instrumental and control engineering, and hydrogeological engineering and related consulting services. My name is Hirsch Prakash, and on January 29, 2017, pursuant to the Consultants Competitive Negotiation Act, CCNA, the village released a request seeking qualification firms interested in providing engineering services to the village. The selection committee for this solicitation independently scored and ranked each firm who submitted proposals and shortlisted the highest ranking firms for interviews and presentations. After hearing presentations from this shortlisted firms, the selection committee recommended contract negotiations with the following firms, which will be presented by Madison Crean. Thank you. The most qualified firms we chose based off of money, or no, sorry, not money, based off of quality and safety for civil engineering was the Ingenuity Group Incorporation, Simons and White Incorporation, Chen Moore and Associates. For traffic engineering, we chose Pinder Troutman Consulting Incorporation, Simons and White Incorporation. For wastewater process and reclaimed water engineering, we chose Hayes and Sawyer PC. Electrical <coughs> instrumentation and control engineering, we chose Hiller's Electrical Engineering Incorporation. And hydro hydrogeological engineering, we chose JLA Geosciences. On June 13, 2017, the Village Council authorized staff to negotiate hourly rates with each of the recommended firms. The proposed rates by each firm firm is summarized and attached as Exhibit A. All professional consulting work will be performed on an as-needed as basis and will be initiated by executing a work authorization to a firm under contract for the related work category. Ex execution of these professional consulting agreements only establishes the terms, conditions, and rate schedules if rendered. Execution of contracts does not obligate the village to assign work to any of the contracted firms. The term of the contracts is for three years with two additional one-year renewal options. We recommend awarding contracts to multiple firms for civil engineering, traffic engineering, wastewater process, and reclaimed water engineering electrical, instrumental, and control engineering, and hydrogeological engineering. All the contracts that exist right now um, will remain valid until the expir expiration of their contracts. Um, the highest costing um, group is ingenu Ingenuity Group, which will go in fixed cost to $2,548, but with um, with specific projects, if we deem that, um, for example, the principal engineer is not needed, we can cut those costs for a specific project. There will be no fiscal impact until the work is assigned, and the cost of engineering services relating to a capital improvement project is included within the project budget. General engineering studies are budgeted within department operating budgets. So to wrap it up, we are seeking for authorization to award contract to multiple forms, uh, firms for civil engineering, traffic engineering, wastewater process, and reclaimed water engineering, electrical, instrumental, and control engineering, and hydrogeological engineering and consulting services. Thank you guys so much. I'd like to open up the floor to public comment. Sarah Casey. Thank you. So I think it's super important to consider any environmental implications that this is going to have throughout our community. I know you judge these businesses based on quality, but does that actually account for any sort of environmental impacts that it's going to have? Yes, quality does include the quality of environmental care of our community. Okay, but like specifically, so I know you're like funding hydrogeological, you know, interests. That was like one of the companies. So like, does this actually account for any waste? Like the dealing of that, you know, the implications of that? Because I understand they're making a positive impact within the community on the services, but what about any other um, services, like anything left over? Like, what do you, what, do you know anything about the processes? As of right now, we have not planned that far. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you. Jake Rogolasowski. <laughs> Rogowski. What is it? Rogowski. Rogowski. I don't My name is Jake Rogowski. Uh, my address is 724 Forest Siri Avenue. Um, I just want to say that I agree with the Ingenuity Group contract because they um, offer very individualized services and give us the most flexibility. And also for the traffic engineering, um, I think that they just offer better traffic specified services for the Pinder company, and they were really the best choice. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hannah. Fight. My name's Hannah Fife and I live on 6619 Duval Avenue and my question is why isn't cost involved with the selection of an engineering firm and why do we need multiple firms? Um, we have high standards for the firms we choose, and our projects are designed to, st to these standards. So in order to maintain these standards, we chose the most qualified firms based not of the cost, but rather <coughs> on quality. Plus, our firms are within budget. Thank you. No further questions. Cooper Hart. My name is Cooper Hart. My address is 600 Cypress Crossing. My question is... is this, I'm sorry, is that in Wellington? Yeah, Wellington. Okay, all right. Yeah. Go ahead. It's important that we say what city you, you Wellington, live in. Florida. So that way they can take that into account that you're a resident. So thank you. Yeah. All right. My question is, how many companies submitted requests to be selected? There were 22 total companies that submitted requests for contracts. Thank you. That's all. Bailey Kane. Hello, my name is Bailey Kane. I live at 1763 Harborside Circle in Wellington, Florida. And I was wondering why not just bid a, a project like a contractor? Again, we're trying to ensure quality and follow certain guidelines that we have set for what we're looking for instead of just trying to get the lowest price. Okay, thank you. Are there any other public comments or questions? Seeing that there is none, I'll open the floor up for council questions or comments. Um, so I see in the proposed uh, contracts that Simmons and White does overlap in civil and traffic and I was wondering why we have multiple companies uh, proposed to be given contracts. And is that solely for manpower? Is that for, yeah, why, why multiple companies? And why can't we give Simmons and White both and cut costs? Uh, we decided to use multiple companies because we can have their manpower and the diversity of the companies. And also some pricing is different within certain companies. So we decided to have multiple for that selection. Um, what are the references that we have for any of these companies as far as like providing good service and taking care of like local concerns and the environment like one of our residents mentioned? All of the following companies have been used previously, so we know based off of the work they've done already. <coughs> okay, thank you. Um, do you believe the mere fact of civil and traffic engineering uh, fields having more than one company could present an issue of conflict? between the companies? No, I do not believe that will present an influ um, a conflict of interest within the companies. Rather, it'll lead to more competitive pricing, which it has in our lower contracts now. And we can use the specific companies when we need them. Thank you. So um, just going off that, you said giving multiple contracts would lead to competitive pricing. But um, going off Ms. Kane's comment, uh, what if you just bid based off project? and then you'll get more competitive pricing there instead of giving them the contract and then they're already being paid. 
We already set these contracts because we thought it was the most efficient way to get a good price rate for a broad array of projects, not just certain projects. Uh, allow me to interject for just one moment. Um, Florida statute, the Consultant Competitive Negotiation Act, which was discussed earlier, Florida statute 287055, does not allow for competitive uh, solicitation for, uh, for engineers. It has to be strictly based on qualifications, so therefore they, can, they are not allowed by Florida statute to bid projects based on price. Thank you guys so much. Do I have a motion for approval? I make a motion to approve the legislation. I second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Seeing that there is none, the, author, the authorization to award annual contracts is approved. Thank you. Good job. Council, our last um, agenda item is paid parental leave policy. Could you ladies state your name as far as please? <coughs> um, my name is Devin Barnes. Tiffany Portu. Leah Schwartz. <laughs> Can you state your name? Oh, I'm Olivia Zolo. <laughs> I think you're oh, looking in the bottom line. left corner yeah, to present. I'm really stupid. <laughs> We've got help on the way. I think you should hit from okay, the Okay, I got it. There you go. <laughs> Um, we're speaking on behalf of the Department of Human Resources, and we'd like to propose paid parental leave here at the Village of Wellington. Wellington is a Wellington is a family. What? Wellington is a family-oriented community with an abundance of hometown character. However, how can Wellington be so successful when its very own government official leaders, such as Mayor Siskin or Vice Mayor Odom, don't have access to paid paternal leave? When a baby is first born, the time the parents spend with the baby is crucial to the baby's development. Studies show that contact between parents and their baby lead to improved neurodevelopment, higher IQ, and lower rates of aggression. <clears throat> this is why here at the Village of Wellington, we propose that new parents will be allowed six consecutive <coughs> weeks of paid leave following the birth of a child or replacement of a child with an employee through adoption or foster care. This, the purpose of paying the purpose of paid parental leave is to establish a strong foundation for future generations right here at the Village of Wellington. You may be asking why it's fair for someone to be paid at home with their newborn, but these new mothers and fathers are at home raising future Wellington taxpayers, lawyers, or even your doctors in retirement homes. <laughs> um, to be eligible for paid parental leave, an employee must have worked for the Village of Wellington for at least 12 consecutive months and have worked at least 1,250 hours for the Village of Wellington over the preceding 12 months. Um, paid leave also allows the mother to breastfeed, which is extremely crucial in a baby's physical and mental development in early stages. For example, we spoke with Dorit uh, Weisel, who is currently writing her PhD specializing breastfeeding, and she gave a statement on the importance of breastfeeding. She states that, Breastfeeding extends well beyond basic nutrition in babies. Um, breast milk is packed with disease-fighting substances that protect their baby from illness. Numerous studies show that breastfed groups have the fastest growth in myelinated white matter in the baby's brain, which helps these children grow strong mentally and physically. Um, you also, the U.S. is also one of the last countries to offer full paid parental leave. <coughs> Um, with that being said, why would the Village of Wellington want anything less for their employees' children? Paid parental leave for employees may boost morale by providing employees with a sense that their life is important to the business that they're working for 
and it could also attract new and young citizens of Wellington to work right here at the village um, if they're planning on having a family. Um, in Denmark, new parents are allowed up to a year of paid parental leave when their baby is born, and Denmark has also been voted the nation's happiest country in 2013, 2014, 2015, and 2016, and we strong... <clears throat> <laughs> we believe there is a definite correlation. Okay, these are some of the reasons why we think you should Im implement paid parental leave here at the Village of Wellington. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to open up the floor to public comment and questions. So, Amy Kaufman. Hello, my name is Amy Kaufman. My address is 12736 Westport Circle, Wellington, Florida. Um, I'd just like to start off by saying I agree with this proposal. I think it's a good incentive for our current employees to stay loyal to the Village of Wellington, offering a good balance between family life and work. Um, I have a question though. How do you plan to accommodate for those uh, workers of the Village of Wellington that aren't parents and how they might be upset over this? Well, like we said, the, you know, they're not just going home to sit around, they're getting paid to raise children, and it's also unhealthy for a parent to be away from a newborn when they're just born. You can't leave a child that just came home from the hospital with a teenager to babysit. So it's extremely crucial for the baby's health and development, and again, the worker is going to come back feeling more loyal to the business because they were allowed this experience. Thank you. Eliana McFarlane. Hello, my name is Eliana McFarlane and I live at 583 Santa Clara Trail. And my question is, do fathers get paid leave as well? Yes. And is that for the same amount of time? Yes. And do they get paid the same as well? Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and it could be mothers and mothers or fathers and fathers as well. <clears throat> yeah. Katie Tolman. Hi, my name is Katie Tolman. I, leave, I live at 13757 Sheffield Street, and my question is, how much are they paid, and what is it based off of? Um, well, it's based off of the salary that they make currently, so they'd be making the same as that they make right now, just at home. Okay, thank you. Juliana Blanca. Hi, my name is Juliana Blanca. I live at 1532 South Club Drive, Wellington, Florida. Um, I think this is a really good proposal. I think it's important for a city that's based off of family and um, motivating raising healthy families. Uh, my question is, how is this going to be implemented? Like, do you think it's something that would be done in a year's time, or like, how do you think the process would take place? Um, well, I would hope that this is something that could happen as soon as possible, because like you said, there's a lot of families here in Wellington, so I'm sure there's a ton of employees that maybe have wanted a family, but they didn't feel like they were able to because they weren't able to leave their job. So as soon as possible would be amazing. Thank you. Are there any other public comments or questions? <clears throat> yes, go on up. <laughs> I uh, just have a question. My name is Jake Rialski. I've been up here a couple times already. What's your um, address? <laughs> can you state your address, please, for the record? 724 Foresteria Avenue, Wellington, Florida. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering, do you plan on allocating more vacation time to employees who perhaps don't uh, have a child in order to accommodate for the uh, increased 
No, because we feel they haven't really done anything to earn that vacation time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're not, they're not really giving back to the community. Like, if you're having a child, that child's going to grow up here in Wellington, go to the schools, and eventually have a job. So they're not contributing to society the same way the parents are. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other public comments or questions? Yes. Abigail Kaufman. Things just got real. <laughs> My name's Abby Kaufman. I live at 12736 Westport Circle. Um, and that's Wellington, Florida, ma'am? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, did you say that only after they've worked there for 12 months that they qualify? Yes, it's either 12 months or... Um, 1,250 hours, like, within that span. So what if they don't meet those parameters? Then you wouldn't qualify. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> should it apply to them anyways, though? Because it's the same concept. They just happen to not work there for that designated amount of time. Should they still get it's paid leave, <coughs> just not as much? Or um, it's We haven't really discussed that, like, that to that extent we've right now we just have like set in not set in stone but that they should work there at least 12 months and that amount of hours within so we haven't really considered that yet okay thank you Jose Acuna <laughs> Hello, my name is Jose Acuna, and my address is 10, 1039 Wellington Park. Uh, my question is, Is do you guys have any guidelines or um, any regulations towards same-sex couples? Like, what are the guidelines for those? Yeah, um, so the um, time allowed for the leave, it's all the same, like two fathers or two mothers. They get the same exact time, the same exact money. It's completely equal. William Bussey. Hi, my name is William Bussey. I live at 1004 Cherry Lane, Wellington, Florida. And my question is, is six weeks long enough to have a positive impact? Six weeks paid leave? As in the six, yeah. Um, we feel that six consecutive weeks is... <laughs> Um, a longer time would obviously be more ideal, but having people be away from work for that long might be um, destructive to the work environment. So I think six weeks, like the first six weeks of a baby's life are the most important. So having the parents physically at home for those six consecutive weeks would be um, the best that we can do for it right now. And again, we can always work on extending that time after seeing how it works out with six weeks. Okay, thank you. That's all. <coughs> Hash Prakash. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Sorry, right. I wrote it back. Hello, my name is Herb Prakash. I would like to ask. Um, that's what that's would, nothing like what you said. <laughs> <laughs> what would what would be the economic problems of giving six weeks paid leave? Because since there would be no production, wouldn't that result in an economic loss? Can you repeat the question? What would be the, be the economic loss of giving six weeks paid leave since there would be no production? Can you rephrase it? <laughs> <laughs> like, if, since they're leaving for six weeks, what, what would be the loss economically? Like, like money oh, loss. Okay. Oh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering this is the village of Wellington, I mean, there are ways that they could technically work at home, and we feel that, you know, like I said, they're going to come back more loyal to the business because they've been allowed this experience. So they're going to come back with a more positive attitude after this. So we feel that there would be no economic loss. All right, thank you. Emily Mosier.
Hi, my name is Emily Moser. My address is 13754 Columbine Avenue, Wellington, Florida. I know you touched on adoption, but is there going to be any difference in when you get to go back with your adopting, like any age? No, for um, also for foster care, it's <coughs> the same exact um, time for any age of the child that you're being placed with. Okay, thank you. Are there any other public comments, questions? Of yes. Course. <laughs> Fill it out afterwards, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Hi, my name is Mark Kay. I live at T045, Amesbury Circle, Wellington, Florida. My question is, how are you going to explain to the people that do not have kids that are going to be not getting the same amount of time off compared to the people that will have kids and getting a advantage per se against other employees? Um, I think anyone who's had a kid can say that having time off for to take care of your newborn isn't exactly a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's a pretty good reason. It's not exactly vacation hours. Yeah, like we said Up before, they're not going home to just watch TV. They're going to raise future citizens of Wellington that are going to be contributing to society when they grow up. And I wouldn't say that if they were having kids, it would be to compete against their employers and come back <laughs> better than another. Thank you. <laughs> are there any go. other public comments or questions? Um. Ooh. Name and address. Name, name and address, please. <laughs> Kayla, Kayla Winkleman. <laughs> yeah, Kayla Winkleman. <laughs> 13752 Columbine Avenue, Wellington, Florida. And I was just wondering what happens if both the parents work for the village of Wellington? How would you accommodate that? Um, well, since they're both eligible and if they both meet the requirements, they can either choose if they want to take it at the same time or they could actually do one parent with the um, six weeks and then right after. Okay, thank you. Any other public comments or questions? Seeing that there is none, I'll open up the floor for council comments and questions. Lizzie, do you have anything? Okay, so there was a resident question about the fact that six weeks might not be long enough, and you guys didn't seem too sure on your answer as far as extended leave. Like, is that taken into account? Are you guys going to actually think about, like, putting in some sort of extended time period if the family realizes that they need more time than six weeks? Because two months doesn't seem like a long time for an infant. Um, considering this is something new to the Village of Wellington, we feel that maybe starting out longer could lead to some issues so I feel like starting at six weeks is good and we definitely want to eventually add on because we do know how crucial it is to the baby's development and it creates a strong bond between the mother and her father to their children which is also extremely important to their life personally <coughs> thank you anybody else I have a comment so a lot of people were talking about um, how some people without kids might be all like, oh no, we don't get that. What the heck? I mean, in the woman's case, she was carrying a baby for nine months and still working. So I don't know. I feel like that's kind of weird how they're complaining. <laughs> <laughs> that is all. Jake? Um, so as we all call Wellington a great hometown, I fully support the growth of our community and the families comprising the backbone of our village. Um, however, Ms. Schwartz, you stated that um, Denmark has um, implemented this throughout their whole country and it is the happiest country on earth. <laughs> however, Denmark may have more feasibility to, do, um, to approve this due to having taxes up to six times as the U.S. in certain regions. Um, so how would we account for this dif differentiation, um, stating that there would be a deficit? However, as you stated, there could be more loyal um, dedication from the workers of the village of Wellington in the future. Can you rephrase that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so with the financial impact in mind, um, with implications... Or what, in, what implications could we potentially see from the 
absence of employees for six full weeks financially do you mean positively or negatively negatively ne- okay um well we can understand that it is different from denmark because their whole culture and environment is a lot different but there are ways that we can maybe work towards that and maybe hopefully one day become the nation's happiest country <laughs> but i feel that um i mean like we said before these parents are getting paid to go home and raise children but we can also understand you know if you don't want kids that might be a little bit upsetting but the company wouldn't be losing money because these are employees that have worked there before for like we said 12 months or over a thousand hours so these are loyal employees so if they come back more loyal it's not an economic loss for the company would we fill their positions with temporary employees or just leave their positions vacant until they come back that would depend on the job that the parent has. Like, maybe if they were mayor, then yes. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan? So, I am supporting what you are saying, and I understand uh, the necessity of this. But I was just wondering, on the financial standpoint, I see that in California and New York, paid leave is financed by employee payroll deductions. So, what would what steps would be taken to ensure that financially we're still okay? Um, we don't have the answers to that at this time, but <laughs> we will get back to you on that. Thank you. <laughs> Any other council comments or questions? One more, sorry. Good. Um, I just wanna say it's kind of awesome that <laughs> we can invest in the future of our community. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I make a motion to vote on this legislation. I second. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Seeing that there is none, the motion to, to approve to adopt a paid parental leave policy is approved. Great job, ladies. At this time, we move into uh, any uh, the public forum. If there's any public comment, Riley Meave. Hi, I'm Riley Meave. My address is one three nine six four Ishnala Circle. My question is: What is the Village Wellington doing to remove or willing to do um, to remove invasive plants from our green areas? We have um, special departments that will deal with those questions, so we personally can't answer that. So sorry, thank you for your comment. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Katie Tolman. Never mind. Abby Kaufman. Hi, my name's Abby Kaufman. I live at 12736 Westport Circle. Um, I had- Is that in Wellington? Yes, Wellington, Florida. That's a good job. <laughs> I had a question regarding the mosquito sprayer people. Um, I appreciate what they do because I live on a lake and mosquitoes are always an issue, but I've had instances where I've been sprayed with the <laughs> mosquito sprayer guy where he did not see me and I got sprayed. I was wondering if there's anything we could do about that and if there's any health issues that could come up from being sprayed or inhaling the spray. Um, this is very concerning. <laughs> <laughs> We're really we sorry. We are taking this very seriously and we will have somebody who can address your issues <laughs> directly help you we can give you Thank information you. so from from what i know that the spray is environmentally friendly otherwise we wouldn't be putting it out uh what monthly weekly um but in terms of your health <laughs> inhaling <laughs> i think we would refer that to someone with more expertise thank you <laughs> skylar hagan Hi, 
Hi, my name is Skylar Hagen. I live at 12471 Sawgrass Court, Wellington, Florida. Um, my suggestion deals with the safety of Wellington High School students. So um, I'm assuming most of you guys know um, the area I'm talking about where um, students turn into the student parking lot in the mornings and kids like cross that crosswalk in the mornings. And um, I've noticed recently a lot of kids don't look um, for the cars that are coming or if they do see them, they don't care and they just keep going um, in the crosswalk, which causes a lot of cars to like stop suddenly, which has caused a lot of accidents from cars like bumping into each other. I know a few people that um, have gotten into accidents that way. So I was wondering if we could put a, um, I don't know what it's called, like a crosswalk um, thing that when you push it, it says that you can walk for like 10 seconds. And so then those students can walk while those cars have to stop. So then that way the cars know that like the students are, are walking. There's already a stop sign right there, I'm pretty sure, that kids are supposed to stop at anyway. So if they're not, then that is kind of their own problem. I've seen like a stop sign for the cars coming out, <laughs> like for the afternoon student parking lot, but I don't think there's a stop sign for the kids. I'm not sure though, but I mean, I feel like it'd provide better safety for them. They can always just still like keep on walking no matter what. Yeah. But um, if it's are, there, it's kind of illegal. Yeah. Are you referring to the left turn in or the right turn in or both? Wait, what? The right, <laughs> Probably the like right, in this, the right turn in. The line. right turn in, yeah. but it's not where you turn in. It's like farther <clears throat> to the actual student parking lot. You're saying once you're actually inside, not on Greenview no. Shores? No, like on Greenview. On Greenview. Yeah. Okay. Um, from what I understand, if we added the button, there would have to be a light above the yes. entrance to the student lot. Um, the allocation of those funds could be difficult to collect. <laughs> However, a remediation that could be made could be a crossing guard. Um, so we could definitely look into that. Yes. Um, it's called a... I, don't, I can't read it. <laughs> On-demand signal. <laughs> And it um, flashes when school is in session, so like it doesn't work, except then when the students press it, then it turns red, so the students know not to turn. Well, thank you for your concern for our student population. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> mm. Kayla Anschutz. Hi, my name is Kayla Anschutz. My address is 11255 Marina Bay Road, Wellington, Florida. Based on the recent approval of a local dispensary of marijuana, I would like to hear the council's opinion. I'm sorry, could you restate? <laughs> Based on the recent approval of a local dispensary of marijuana, I would like to hear the council's opinion. Are you talking about the one in Lake Worth? <coughs> no, recently one the for one that was Wellington. Recently approved. Approved. Oh, for Wellington. Not currently, but... It was approved, but it doesn't exist yet. Um, as a point of inquiry... Um, um, recreational marijuana is illegal in the state of Florida. So would this be for uh, medical medi purposes? Me yeah, medicinal purposes. Um, <laughs> if there is a benefit, then by all means, it could bring in money. So why not? I mean, I see that um, there are cases and medical conditions that do require that as a medication to relieve stress or other possible uh, complications. So I do see benefits in terms of a citizen's health. And if that helps the citizens of Wellington, I do favor it. No comment. Um, seeing families go through illnesses where marijuana has been used as treatment, such as cancer and um, I see this could be a benefit if it is properly dispensed <laughs> and is not taken advantage of by a population of people who should not be able to access the product. I completely agree with Jake. I feel like people should have options for different treatment and pain medications. And if this is one of those options, as long as it's being dispensed properly and all regulations and guidelines are met, I feel like it's okay. Yeah. Thank you. It's okay. Um, Kayla Winkleman. <clears throat> it's all good. Just as just as a, a, a note, um, the public comment session does not require interaction between the council and the uh, 
person that's presenting, although that's strictly up to up to you. But I would advise you as your legal counsel <laughs> to uh, make decisions wisely. <laughs> that's why I said no comment. <laughs> Um, I live at 13752 Columbine Avenue, Wellington, Florida. Um, I would just like to know why there are so many potholes in Wellington. <laughs> we have been working on some of the streets. We can get you into contact with the people who are in charge of fixing them. Great answer. That's a yeah, great answer right there. Thank you. <laughs> and they will get back to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> She's a quick learner. <laughs> and that, is there any other public comment? We will now move on. Uh, one more. Where? Sorry. Um, my name is Marley Cannon, 1176, the 12th Fairway. I clearly live in Mongolia, Ulaanbaatar. It's not in Wellington. Never mind. Nobody gets it. Whatever. Move on. Um, I know <laughs> you guys don't have much connection with the school district and their policies, but the buses, oh, the buses at Wellington High School, um, I'm not sure if this is for everywhere else, but it's nothing I noticed as someone who rides the bus, more importantly in the mornings, is that... Um, the buses generally arrive on school campus around 640, yet they don't let students get off the buses until 7 o'clock, even though there are already students on campus. Um, what are your thoughts on this, and like, how would you, like, mm, what do you think would be some ways that like, you guys would want to change that? Um, although the council does not have jurisdiction in the school board we do attend all school board meetings and attempt to influence and work with officials including marcia andrews who represents district five um we can look into this issue it is primarily for safety concerns as the campus doesn't officially open until 7 a.m when assistant principals are allocated throughout the campus However, we will take this into consideration as many students, I'm sure, have business to do on campus before. Thank you. Question. Can I ask a question? Is there any? Can I ask a question? Can I, can I ask our question? Yeah. <laughs> what do you do in the, in, the, in the 20 minutes between like 6.40 and 7 o'clock on the bus? My main issue isn't with the fact that like I'm not getting off earlier, but it's also the fact that there are already students on campus for one. And also, if they really don't want to let us on campus until 7 o'clock, I understand that. So why don't the buses come later so I can sleep more? <laughs> <laughs> Just to quickly comment, um, I know the students that arrived before that are not like a liability because supervision is not formally, uh, it has not formally begun. So if once you are picked up by the bus, you are then um, a liability. So you cannot formally be let out without supervision. So when you're on the bus, you have supervision. But we will bring up those concerns with the school board. Okay, I guess, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Is there any other public comment, questions? Yes. I'm sorry. <coughs> Hi, my name is Emily Mosier. My address is 13754 Combine Avenue, Wellington, Florida. And I would just like to add like a comment to something you were talking about previously about the medical marijuana. My sister actually has epilepsy, and it's nice to know that there is actually something coming out there for medical issues. So I would just want like, I'm glad that this is happening in Wellington. <laughs> That's all Thank I'd you. Like to add. Thank, Thank you so for much. Sharing. Any other public comments, questions? Seeing that there is none, we will move forward to manager's reports. Yes, thank you, Mayor and Council. I would like to take this opportunity to um, 
thank everyone involved in this process, but we have some special guests in the audience that I would like to uh, recognize and bring up for comment. And first, I would like to bring up um, our councilwoman, Councilwoman Siskin, if you would please come up. Thank you. Please state name your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 3465 Santa Barbara Drive, Wellington, Florida. Um, I just want to say you guys did an amazing job, and I'm so glad to see you all getting involved with the Civics 101 here at the Village. Um, our staff did a fabulous job preparing you, um, running the election, and a lot of work went into it behind the scenes as well, so it's not just what everyone see here, sees here tonight, but... Um, what a wonderful job you all did, and you took it very seriously. I think you learned a lot. It was really hands-on, and I think coming out of the classroom and being able to see what the real issues are that we sometimes face um, it really gives you a little deeper sense of what local government is all about. So I'm really glad to see you all uh, participating and, and really engaging with the community. And again, thank you, staff, for doing this. I think it's wonderful, and I think we're actually going to be doing it with our middle schoolers um, in a bit. I don't know when, but you're going to even go down to middle school and get them involved. So thanks you. thank you all for coming out this evening. And did you want to bring anybody else up? Yes, I would like to bring up the principal of Wellington High School, Mr. Crochetti. I'm Mario Crochetti, principal of Wellington High School. Uh, my thought, my thanks to uh, staff and uh, council for even considering uh, putting on this type of activity. It's really, really a, a great opportunity for our students. Uh, Wolverines, you did a wonderful job this evening. Okay, you be commended. Mr. Stink, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. And speaking of Mr. Sink, we would like your teacher to please come up and uh, say a few words for us. Before Mr. Sink uh, comes up, uh, we want to make sure that we all know what the extra credit is before you. I think there was some questions back in session number two about how much extra credit. And substantial? We, substantial and ample and... There's a difference. Yes, there is a great difference. It will be ample, not substantial. Uh, I addressed that with a few students after school today. Uh, I would like to thank Mr. Salis. Uh, Mr. De La Vega, Ms. Edwards, especially Mr. Barnes, uh, Mr. Grossetti, thank you for being here. Uh, folks, you did a great job. I was impressed with the questions. Some of them I did not anticipate. I think some of them you guys didn't anticipate. But this That's is correct. where it all starts. You know, we talk a lot in our classes about national news events, the importance of, but this is where everything begins. This is where you as individuals can make a real impact. You have to be involved. One thing I, I preach is don't sit on your butt, let other people make the decisions for you without putting your two cents worth in. This is where it begins. You can make a real difference starting here. You have great people working for the village, I'm not going to say take advantage of them, but utilize them. Your questions were tremendous. I was very pleased. There were some, as I said, I was not anticipating, but they were on point. Very good items. I'm really impressed. Thank you again for your participation. Remember, you do have a test tomorrow, some of you. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of you will have that on Friday. Mm. Something to look forward to this evening. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to acknowledge uh, some of our executive staff members who are here. Tom Landine, who represented engineering. Tom, if you would please stand. Thank you. And I would like to recognize Kim Gibbons, who acted as our um, city cl village clerk this evening, but also represented human resources. Kim, if you would please stand. And to our communications department, I would like to acknowledge them. Thank you so much because they do such a great job making sure that uh, 
lights, camera, action. So you all will be seeing us on the Village's uh, Facebook page and on our website. And I would like to bring up tonight's acting assistant of Village Clerk, but the Village's real assistant village manager jim barnes if jim you would come up please i would like jim only one thing everything mr sink said right on and even though there were a gazillion more kids from palm beach central 100 percent of the wellington kids participated tonight not all the kids from palm beach central did so good job All right, Mayor, that concludes my report, and I would like to turn it over to you. And also, I have to acknowledge my acting uh, village attorney this evening. Thank you, Mr. Ed Delavea. And I have to acknowledge and have Mr. Jonathan Zala stand up. Jonathan, please. Jonathan coordinated this process. And... Uh, we are representing the community services department and now that you guys are civically engaged we have a lot of volunteer opportunities we have a food drive and a toy drive coming up and uh, we're going to send that information to your teacher mr sink so we can get that out so if you guys would like to help us during the holidays to um, support our children in need in the community we'll get that information out to you community service hours for those that need it absolutely so i'll pass it along back to you, Mayor Siskin. Thank you. We're going to move forward with council reports. So, council, we'll start with Vice Mayor Odom. Um, this was a really good experience, like Mr. Singh said, to see like where government actually starts and how it impacts our lives and how we can have a say in our own local areas just by coming here. So, seeing what it's really like was kind of a cool experience. Um, Brendan, do you want to go? Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who helped put this on, and thank you for the awesome presentations. Those were really well done, and uh, you guys seemed very educated on the topic, and I've really enjoyed this. It was a really cool opportunity, and yeah, thank you, Village. Kyle? I turned it away so it wouldn't hear me breathe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It was nice to um, hear people laugh at the things I say for once. Usually people just kind of give me a funny look and kind of walk the other way. Um, yeah, this was really fun. Shout out to my girlfriend. She's cool. Uh, you guys are great. This was a, uh, I thought this would be boring, but it wasn't. So that was nice. Thank you. That's it. Jake? Um, I'd like... <laughs> I'd like to thank, uh, start off with Mr. Cressetti and Mr. Sink for giving us the opportunity to sit up here today and share presentations. Um, I believe this group is very diverse in their thoughts as we're all able to share and deliberate on many topics that are real issues in Wellington and also more widespread. Um, I think there was great ideas that we discussed and I especially want to say that the human resources group put on a great presentation and <laughs> and the way they answered questions was extremely extremely mature and i think they did a great job um i'd also like to thank the rest of the council sitting up here with me it was a lot of fun working with everyone so thank you to everyone here and for everyone who helped put it on First off, I'd like to thank the village for really taking an interest in like high school government because I've never gotten to do anything like this, obviously. Um, but it was really cool because I've to have like an experience like this. It's so different. And like I was telling like friends up north, like, oh my gosh, like I get to be mayor, and they're like, what? <laughs> so it's really cool to have something like this, and I think it taught me a lot. Um, it's also like I've seen council meetings, obviously, because my mom. Um, and it's definitely 10 times more difficult up here speaking and giving your opinions and making sure like you do the right thing and don't say the wrong thing and that you consider everyone. And I think it was really cool and it was honestly a great introduction to politics and government because it's not something I've really um, put myself into or involved myself into besides student government within SGA. So being in something, something, in something <laughs> so large, or more large scale was really cool. And thank you to the village and Mr. Grissetti and Mr. Sink for giving us the opportunity. It was 
it was it was really fun. So, yeah. Okay. Before we adjourn, um, we have our communications department back there. They're just chomping at the bit in order to take some pictures here. So what we want to do is we're going to have, first of all, no one leave because we're going to take an entire group picture. But we'll have the council step on down with uh, Ms. Siskin, um, Mr. Crescetti, Mr. Sink. If you could come on up, we can get a picture of all of you. And we do have refreshments when you guys yeah, get finished with the big picture, okay? Oh, hey, she wants one up there. You can take one up there. Wait, everyone's under the one. Yeah, no, okay, well, standing, sitting, whatever. You ready? You guys can. Oh, cool. Go ahead, go ahead and, and, go and come down, stay down and. Until they want to take the picture. Oh, do you want the binder? Now you're good. Just leave it. We're good. Yeah, take it. Go down and then you, you guys have name tags down there you can grab. Liz? You got it. Okay. Okay, before before we take the picture with everyone, we have to adjourn the meeting if the council can come right back up here real quick. So yes, Mayor Siskin, you must adjourn the meeting. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. I take back that motion. The, the mayor has it. The mayor has to ask for the motion. I retract my second. I'm gonna third it. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there a motion, Jake? I make a motion for double extra credit. I second. I third. <laughs> All in favor? Say aye. 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 <laughs> All opposed? <laughs> Seeing that there is none, the motion passes, and there will be double extra credit. <laughs> This is the cheesiest thing I've ever been involved in. <laughs> you can the adjourn. Power, the power of government. <laughs> power of government. Um, this is how government works. So, so double, right? Triple? Should, can we go for triple? <laughs> okay. The, the motion already passed, so. Uh, do I hear a motion for adjournment? I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Second. Second. 
Um, second. A third. A second. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone for the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Seeing that there is none, this motion, this meeting is adjourned. Okay. All right, every, everyone, please come on.